put in answer one the correct answer. Okay, so that's possible answer number one. Now, what is the response for, that I give or that the lesson gives to the student if they choose answer one? I'm going to say, good work. That is correct. Okay, so that's going to be answer and response. That's a relationship between these two. Now, I have a jump again, just like from the branch page. I can choose to jump to the next page of the lesson. I could choose to jump to an unseen question. I could choose to jump back to the introduction page where I have the, the three branches. I could do that as well. For this jump, I'm just going to say to go to the next page, and I'm going to give it a score. Now, the score is going to mean that this answer is correct if I give it a, a point value here. So I'm going to say it's going to have a score of 100. It's 100% 100 correct, okay? Okay, I know this is wrong. So I'm going to give it a wrong answer. Sorry, that's incorrect. And I'm not going to have it give any points for that. However, I'm also going to leave the jump to say this page, so that a student has another opportunity once they click Submit to answer the question correctly. If I'm jumping them back to the same page, they get to see it again and get to try again. Now, it's very important to remember that in a multiple choice question in a lesson, you only have the opportunity to give one kind of feedback for correct answer and one kind of feedback for the wrong answer. What I mean is you can't give custom feedback for this particular kind of answer. I couldn't type here, that is not the final version you turn in to your teacher, because then it will appear that way for all of my other wrong answers, and that might not apply to them. So choose a generic response answer for your incorrect answers that you can use across the board. For example, I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come down and give them another wrong answer. This is the stage where you edit and clean up your rough copy. We know that that's wrong. And I'm going to paste in, sorry, that's incorrect. These must be the same, okay? This page is ready to go. I'm going to come down to the bottom and click Add a Question Page. You can see here I've got 10 spaces because, remember, we set that number to be 10. I'm going to click Add a Question Page. Okay, now I have my introduction writing process, and right below it I have the draft stage page. And I can see what that looks like with the content here, the question, and then all my multiple choice possibilities. If I choose to view in the collapsed version, I can still see the pages begin to stack up. It's very much a visual process as you're looking at it. The next thing that I need to do is create a page for my editing stage and my rewriting page. I'm going to do this pretty quickly. I'm going to come down to the bottom, click Add a Question Page. I'm going to call this the Editing Stage. Oops. And give some content about editing. And then I might ask a follow-up question, or I might not. Remember how I said that some teachers don't want to deliver their content and ask a question on the same page so that the answer isn't so easily visible? I'm going to show you how to handle that right now. For example, if I wanted to deliver the content on the editing stage but not ask a question on this page, all I need to do is leave my answers blank. Leave everything completely blank, hit Add a Question Page, and all you'll insert here is a page full of content. You won't have any question following it. See how there's no answers down here with the editing stage? Now, if I wanted to, immediately following the editing stage page, I could ask a question. That way the students aren't looking at the answer at the same time. I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a question page here and call it the editing follow-up question. I'm going to say, what is the abbreviation for an editing mark, that means check spelling, okay? So that might be the question that I ask on this page. I didn't put any content to start, I just put in a question. I'm going to come down here and enter a couple of possible answers. 
first the right one. Then a few wrong ones. Check spelling. Sorry, that's incorrect. And maybe uh, check spelling. Sorry, that's incorrect. And my two wrong answer feedbacks are identical. Come down here and click add a question page. So you can see we're building this process. We're going, going back and forth between the flow that we can look at of the page and the editing stage. And we can see that the follow-up question immediately follows the editing stage. And we know that this page right here was set to jump to the next page. So in the order that it is here stacked up on my page, that is the order that the lesson is going to flow. So now I have two of my three branches set up. I've got the draft branch and a question completed and the editing stage completed. I could add dozens of question pages, one right after the other, to really make these two branches very robust. And then I could start working on my third branch, the rewriting branch. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go back now and finish setting up that branch page so that I'm sure the lesson flows properly. I come back up to the top where the introduction is for the writing process, and I'm going to edit this page. How do I get back into it to edit it? The universal Moodle editing icon right there is next to the introduction page. There's also a preview, a delete, and a reorder button. You should recognize these symbols from the editing that you do on the front page of your course. Click the update icon to head right back into the editing area. Now I need to make sure that the draft and the editing stage jump to the right sections. So I set the jump for the draft. And I set the jump for the editing stage. I haven't set up my page for rewriting yet, so I'll have to come back a third time. That's okay. Okay, let's take a look at what it looks like. I'm going to go back to the preview mode. Introduction, the writing process. Follow a branch below to learn about the three stages of the writing process. That's the little navigational hint that I typed in for the students. I'm going to click on the draft and let's see if it takes me there. It does. It takes me to the draft stage. And lo and behold, I've got a question at the bottom and my possible answers right there. For those of you who are concerned that the question and the content are on the same page, trust me, there are occasions where this is very useful. For example, if you were to put in a link to an article or a document that the student must read on the lesson page, they will be navigating away from this page to go ahead and read the content that you've inserted. Then they can come back and answer the question. You also don't have to necessarily ask a question here. That's just a regurgitation of the information you presented above. You can ask an introspective question or an essay question where the students do have to do some actual uh, critical thinking. When I make my answer, I'm going to choose, this is the stage where you edit and clean up your rough copy. That's the incorrect answer. I'm going to choose that and see what I get. That's right, I get my custom feedback. Sorry, that's incorrect. But if I click continue, I get a chance to answer again, just like I had set. A draft is the first stage of the writing process. I know that's right. Good work. Now when I click continue, let's see what happens. Ah, I'm taken to the editing stage. This is a problem. I want to take them back to the beginning, the branch area, so that they can choose their own adventure, so to speak. They can choose when they're ready to move on to the editing stage. So I need to fix that. I'm going to go into the editing tab. I'm going to come down to that draft page, which took me to the wrong spot. And whoops. What I see is that the jump is to the next page. It's not back to the introduction. Let's fix that now. The jump should not be to the next page if you get it right. It should be to the introduction. See how these jumps work? You can come back in and refine them if at any point you find that your lesson is directing you to the wrong page. Now things will work great.